Okay, so I've got an Onkyo receiver here. This one is an HTR520, and I've troubleshot this one and diagnosed it with a bad microprocessor. So I'm going to go ahead and scrap this unit out. So what do you save out of one of these units? Let's just go ahead and tear it apart and see what's in there and see what's worth saving and what's not. Okay, so I've got the top off. You can see I've got the power transformer, uh, the heat sink with the bridge rectifiers right here, the filter capacitors, uh, the preamp driver board, the pre drivers, and the power output transistors on the heat sink right here, along with the microprocessor that I've diagnosed as being defective over here. Uh, I've got the tuner back here and a bunch of jacks and whatnot on the back panel. So usually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything out of here. I'm gonna take all the components off of the heat sink because I don't need the aluminum heat sink. I'll recycle that. I'm gonna save all the circuit boards to possibly rob parts off of in the future. So let's go ahead and get the back panel off of this thing. There's uh, probably 50 screws back here that need to come out and we'll get the back off, we'll get the boards out of here, we'll strip everything off. Um, I usually do save the power transformer. I don't know why, I've never needed one, but I save them just in case because there's many different voltage taps on these transformers. And maybe I can use one in a project one day. I just don't know, but I just have a hard time throwing away these power transformers. So I always save the power cords because I may need a cord one day. I usually don't save the strain reliefs, but I do save the power cords nevertheless. So here is the speaker terminal board with the Omron relays. I always save those just in case I need to relay one day. And uh, maybe I can use these in a project down the road if I want some binding posts for something or some speaker terminals. So we'll save that. Okay, well here's what I ended up with. So, I don't know why I saved these, maybe for the headphone jack, for the display, who knows, the rotary encoder over here, possibly. But I normally save the display board. Like I said, I saved the power transformer because you never know what you might need in a project one day. Speaker terminal jack board with the relays, I saved that. This one's got a regulator on it, some capacitors, a resistor. I always save the circuit boards. I don't know why. They don't actually take up much space. This is the uh, component video input board. A couple little uh, Omron relays, small relays on that. I'll save that as well. This is the composite video with the Toslink optical inputs and the coaxial digital input. Some separated video input jacks and some composite video jacks. Uh, it's got some ICs. Maybe I need an IC one day in something. I don't know, but I have spare parts that way. This is the pre-driver board. You can see left, right, center, surround left, surround right, and surround back on this one. So I'll save all of those components. Maybe I need a transistor off of this sometime down the road. This is the AC input output with the small converter transformer, the standby transformer, and the power relay. I always save those. Maybe this transformer will come in handy one day. It's got a couple fuses I can use down the road. 
Uh, this board is the microprocessor digital signal processing board. It's got some uh, specialized input output jacks, left right audio, um, some regulators, a couple big capacitors, a bridge rectifier right here. I'll go ahead and put that in the box as well. Once again, all the screws. I always save all the mica insulators as well because I never know if I'm going to need one down the road. I saved the volume control knobs. Um, had quite a few receivers come in with missing knobs, so that's always a bonus feature. Uh, try to save the ribbon cables if you can. You never know when you need a specialized ribbon cable. And then the main power amplifier board with all the power amplifier ICs. Uh, this one's got a variety of different transistors and ICs on it, big filter caps, a couple of big bridge rectifiers, the uh, power control relay, a couple of them right here. Down in here is a couple of thermistors. Um, I just saved those. I never know if I'm going to want to rob parts for testing or whatnot, or sometimes I'll use some used parts, uh, donate them to a customer at no charge. It's interesting, this one's got multiple... Uh, levels of parts on it. This is the same C5242 as this one, but that one says Toshiba, that one does not. I wonder if this was repaired one time under warranty. Uh, normally all the transistors match in these things. And then the input, the front input jack with the separated video connector, not to be confused with Super VHS. Remember it is S video, separated video, where the luminance and the chroma are separate and then probably composite left right audio save those maybe i use those in a project well anyhow there it is uh, so the case the steel is going to get recycled uh, everything else i'm going to put in a box of mixed receiver parts and hopefully one day down the road they will certainly help somebody out i certainly hope you enjoyed this quick little video on what do you save when you go ahead and junk out one of these receivers or just any kind of electronic device? What's worth saving and what's not worth saving? If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. Remember, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the questions and comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thanks for watching this video. Once again, I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.